Okay, in your readings this week, um, it talks about acceptance sampling, and this is actually very important for a company that maybe receives a big lot of items. In fact, the example in your textbook talks about a part that goes on an air conditioner that shuts the air conditioner off so it doesn't overheat. And so if a company gets a lot of these items, and it certainly doesn't have the time and the resources to check every single item. So what they do is they come up with what would they accept. In other words, their acceptance criterion, which would just simply say the maximum number of defects. And so once again, the example in your textbook says, well, we will accept if there's no defects and we're going to take a sample size of 15. So either you accept it or you reject it, which should right away t hopefully remind you about binomial probabilities. So what we can do, and again, I'm just using the example in the textbook, is if you notice, they used one, two, three, four, five. Well, I want to actually go ahead and turn these into probabilities, so that's why mine might look a little different than what you actually see in the text. And so from here, to find my probability that I accept, well, I'm going to use my binomial distribution, my number of successes, okay, so this might, in words, might sound a little weird, but in this case, we're saying that there's no defectives, so, of course, I want to absolute value that, absolute reference. Tell them a math teacher, right? Absolute value, absolute reference. Trials, absolute reference. And then the probability of success, which is going to be my percent defective. And I want each one of these probabilities, so I don't want to add anything up, is why I put false. And I get my first value, and then I can scroll down, and I can see all my different probabilities. So, you know, they say, like, for example, well, what if, what if you want to know, know the probability based off of this sample that 5% would be defective? Well, 0.4633 would be the probability that you would accept. Well, what if you want to know the probability you reject? Well, that's pretty easy, right? Hopefully you remember complements, one minus. And so if I go back and I'm looking at the, if 5% are defective, what's the probability that I'm going to accept, okay, based on my criterion, is the 0.4633. And then, of course, the probability I reject, the 0.5367. And so to be able to find just different of these values, okay, you either change your percent defective. Um, if there's other percentages you want to know, you change your criterion. And typically what you do is you create an, um, an OC curve, an operating characteristic curve, by simply highlighting these and you will see this is actually showing you that actual curve. And usually what you want to do is you want to check different sample size, uh, different criterion. Maybe you can live with uh, one defective. You want to know what's the probability you either get none or one. And when you create these curves, you're looking for, of course, the highest curve is going to give you the highest probability of acceptance. And then the lowest curve is going to give you the lowest probability.